Please welcome Stephen Voltz and Fritz Groa. Eat your bird. My name is Stephen. I used to be a trial lawyer. And my name is Fritz, and I used to be a professional juggler. On a Saturday morning in June of 2006, we posted a three-minute video online that ended both of our careers. <laughs> it did start new ones. Yes. It's great to be here at YouTube, especially for us, since that's sort of our home, our home base. You guys, since we started, have really grown. It started with home video and viral video, and now you're doing news and music videos and programming, and you're beginning to replace television. What we're really interested in is the viral video stuff, the stuff that people really share actively online. And the key question is, what makes people do that? What makes people share something? What's the content? What is it that, that makes someone watch something passively and other people watch it, watch something else, and make it viral? So for the past year or so, Fritz and I have been busy writing the Viral Video Manifesto, which is essentially an elements of style for viral video. It's not about what camera to use or how to get good lighting or SEO or thumbnail selection. It's about the content. It's about what is it inside those videos that makes people want to share it. We've looked at the traits of the videos that we've had that have gone viral and a lot of other videos that have gone viral and have looked to see what is it about that content that makes them contagious. <clears throat> So this is a new kind of video, and the techniques of old media, the techniques of television and film, just don't work. As we looked at our own videos that have gone viral, as we looked at other people's video, videos that have gone viral, and we started, we started talking to people like Trish C. from OK Go, uh, Judson Lapley, Matt Harding, Charlie Todd, started to see that, yes, there are consistent patterns. There are techniques that work. When we put that video, when we first put that video online back in 2006, we told one person. We really weren't ready to go live yet, so I just told my brother David in San Francisco, and he told a friend of his in Seattle who put it on FARC. By the end of the first day, we had 14,000 views. This is back in 2006. By the end of the second day, we had tens of thousands more. And now it's become a viral video classic with millions and millions of views. Hard to count because of so many bootleg copies, actually. Um, and after we posted that first video, Stephen and I, we were both going to be gone for the next several weeks after that. So we asked our friend Jason if we could put his name and phone number on our website, and just in case Letterman called. Well, Monday morning, about 48 hours after we posted that first video, Monday morning, Jason calls and says, you know how you asked if you could put my name and phone number on your website? <laughs> Just in case Letterman called? Yeah, Letterman called. That was Monday morning. Tuesday morning, the Conan O'Brien show called. Wednesday, we were on All Things Considered on NPR. Thursday, we got an email from the folks at Wet Design, the people who built the Bellagio Fountains, one of the big inspirations for that first Coke and Mentos video. I was afraid they were going to sue us. <laughs> And that was the beginning of EP Bird as a company and the beginning of an amazing ride that now, six and a half years later, just keeps rolling. Now, in the last six and a half years since that first video, we have, well, we've made videos with a quarter of a million sticky notes. We built a Coke and Mentos powered rocket car, which actually you can see on YouTube in 3D. We shot that with, uh, it was directed by Rob Cohen of The right. Fast and the Furious. So we called it The Fizzy and the Furious. <laughs> and um, we, we've made videos working in conjunction, in conjunction with McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Office Max, ABC Family, and more. And each of the major projects has gone viral and gotten several million views. And it's had an astonishing impact for the brands as well. Our campaigns for Coca-Cola spiked two liter Diet Coke sales in the United States by over 5% twice, and they boosted Mentos sales by 15% for three years straight. But we, we didn't set out to be viral video experts. What we studied was clowning. We studied European-style, simple, red-nose clowning. 
We both studied with a lot of different teachers, but in particular with Avner Eisenberg at the Celebration Barn Theater in South Paris, Maine. At one point, I had a one-man clown show up in San Francisco. And uh, I toured with a Cirque du Soleil spinoff. Between the two of us, we've spent a lot of time studying that kind of performance. What makes one circus act breathtaking and another boring? What makes one clown funny and another, oh dear God, make him stop? <laughs> it turns out it's all about making a connection with your audience. When you're performing in a barn in the woods of Maine, you can't pretend you're on Broadway with all the lights and the sets and the dazzle. You've got to drop all that pretense and just focus on connecting with the people you're in front of. And it turns out, it turns out that viral video is exactly the same. This isn't television with all the crane shots and dolly shots, cameras covering every angle pans and zooms and quick edits. This, this is reality seen through a cell phone camera. Television has spent decades perfecting <laughs> video production You got it, you techniques. got it. But online, what you've got to do is cut through all that and focus on connecting with people. <laughs> this, this is a new kind of video. All the, the production techniques from TV and film don't work. All the techniques that you've seen in old media they're actually in your way. <laughs> Television uses quick edits and crazy camera angles and fast cuts and news crawls and zooms and sound effects to keep us from turning away. And those techniques trick us into watching by exploiting a primal human reaction called the orienting response. The orienting response is what kicks in when we hear a sudden noise or we see a sudden movement. Now, all of our, all of our senses immediately, involuntarily, automatically orient to that stimulus just for a few seconds. Now, from an evolutionary standpoint, that's really important because that noise might be a snake in the grass or that movement might be a tiger about to attack. And Television is constantly stimulating our orienting response. A quick cut or a sudden zoom forces us to pay attention, if only for a moment. When that moment is gone, they hit us again and again. So we literally can't turn away. And it's how, the orienting response is really powerful, but it has a cost. Literally. The orienting response causes your heart rate to slow. And for a few, few seconds, the alpha waves in your brain are blocked. That's what television does with its cuts and its edits and its sound effects. So with television, oh, actually, uh, uh, it's, um, it's Robert Kube at uh, Rutgers and Mahai Chekhsent Mahai in Claremont. They studied, they studied TV viewers. And they found that they report being relaxed and passive. And that passivity continues even after they've turned the TV off. And that's exactly what you want if your objective is to keep people from changing the channel. TV numbs us into this lethargic stupor so that we, we finally stumble off to bed. We realize we just spent the last three hours watching reruns of Dukes of Hazard. But online, putting your audience into that kind of a trance is a problem. To go viral, your goal is to get people to stop what they're doing and actively sit up and tell their friends about what they've just seen. The researchers at the uh, University of Pennsylvania, Catherine Milkman and uh, Jonah, Berger. Jonah Berger, 
have looked at what makes people share content online, and what they found is that, in fact, when we're passive, we don't share much. What gets us sharing, what's really most contagious, is content that puts us in an active, positive mood, that gives us active, positive emotions. So it's things that amaze us or things that make us laugh. That's what's contagious. As we did the work for the viral video manifesto, we found that whether you're on stage or online, it's exactly the same. You need to cut through the tricks and the flash of old media and focus on creating a human connection. So to create contagious content, there are four core principles we found are crucial to understand. First, be true. Don't fake it, make it real. Second, don't waste my time. Get down to business right away. Third, be unforgettable. Show us something we have never seen before. And finally, ultimately, it's all about humanity. And it's important to notice that to, to note that you don't have to be perfect in all four of these. You can go viral with a strength in one area making up for weaknesses in others. Particularly three or four. Yes. But the, the, the more you can stick right. to all four rules, the better. So let's dig into each of these four rules a little bit more. So first, be true. So we crave true, authentic experiences. But television gives us a, a packaged version of reality. Whereas the internet, the, the potential is now to give us that raw, unfiltered experience. So a sneezing baby panda or a kid biting his brother's finger, these, these are not made by actors. These are not made by editors. These, these don't have camera people with fancy cam, you know, film school camera moves. These are made by real people for real people. So contagious videos, the, the, the opportunity with viral video is to make us a fly on the wall. Because anything that interferes with the, with the feeling that we are there reduces the emotional connection. So make us a fly on the wall. No actors, no edits, no fancy camera moves. Viral videos show us real people having real reactions to real events. So what really happens when you drop 500 Mentos mint candies into 100 bottles of Coke, as we did for the Extreme Diet Coke and Mentos experiments? <laughs> What really happens when you send 250,000 Super Balls bouncing down a hill in San Francisco as Sony Bravia did for their Bouncing Balls video? And uh, what really happens when a, driver with an, when a car with an invisible driver <laughs> pulls up to a drive through as Rahat Hussein did in Invisible <laughs> drive through Prank? <laughs> These videos captured the real thing when it really happened. They didn't recreate anything. They just captured the truth. In June, of, <clears throat> in June of 2009, a video appeared on YouTube with the description, a magical moment happens in Disneyland USA on a summer evening when a young man proposes to his girlfriend in Disneyland Registered trademark. Resort. <clears throat> it was fake. If you couldn't tell from the description, it was fake. This video has dozens of shots, lots of cuts, a crane shot, I think, probably three or four cameras, the perfect couple. This is a toothpaste commercial. The folks at Disney didn't trust that a real wedding proposal would be interesting enough to go viral. But consider this, that same month, Jill Peterson and Kevin Hines from Minnesota posted video of their wedding, their wedding party going down the aisle in the JK wedding entrance dance. This video was real. This video was one of the most popular viral videos of the year. Now, coming from the circus, I've seen a lot of great handstands in my life. This is not one of them. <laughs> but it's beautiful. 
These are not the greatest dancers, but we love them for that because they're real. So JK Wedding Entrance Dance, it's true, and, the, and there's nothing in the video production techniques that interfere with the feeling that we are there. It's shot with one camera, no edits. There's no second take for this video. So the, the, what you want to do is just throw away the script. Trust the truth. And just turn the camera on and get everybody dancing down the aisle. Our next rule is don't waste my time. For us, that means nothing but money shots. If you've got a baby monkey riding backwards on a pig, show us that immediately. As Elvis said, a little less conversation, a little more action. And as Natasha Varushka, the queen of swords, said, less chit chat, more swallowing. She's a sword swallower. <laughs> We learned this lesson the hard way with our extreme sticky note videos. We had spent months developing dozens of really cool effects with sticky notes. We used these uh, zigzag pads. Zigzag pads are made for pop-up dispensers, so you pull one out, the next one comes out. And we discovered that you could make a little waterfall with it. We, in fact, we, we spent about three ah, days exploring this. Literally one of the first ideas we had was it seems like it should be able to flow like a slinky. Seem like, but you can see it, it catches, it doesn't quite work. I kid you not, for three days we tried everything we could think of. We made sculptures and puppets and after three days, it finally occurred to us to try this. <laughs> that was it. That waterfall led us to Thank you. So that's about 4,000 sticky notes. For our extreme sticky note video, we had a quarter of a million. But how do we start? So let's take a look. So first, there's a woman at her desk, and we're watching our old video, and then her boss comes out, and he seems like he's kind of a jerk. And he gives her lots of work to do, and she gives him a look. And then finally, he leaves, and then we go by this guy who's not doing anything. And then there's a couple guys in the back that look like maybe they've got, these guys are us and they've got a couple of, it's a complete waste of time. So th that, that, that video started with an agonizing 58 seconds of, of that. that before we got to what we promised you, which was extreme sticky note experiments with hundreds of times what you just saw there. So there were, there were some compromises that, that were necessary. That video actually debuted simultaneously online and on television. So we had to be working within the rules of television as well. But we'd actually, we'd like to show you a video that, um, that we made just for internal purposes uh, in the very, very early days of working with sticky notes. This was just our little, our little video to say, this is what we're working on. It's a proof of concept proof for of us, concept really, yeah. To give us a hint of what we might be able to do. Let's take a look. Video you know, doesn't have any of the big effects. 
That's literally you know, a few hundred right. sticky notes. But there's a lot about that, that, that video that we like better. The, the big video, it took 58 seconds to get started. That video, it's all over and done right. in 58 seconds. So we found ourselves wondering you know, how many people watched the big video and just switched over to something else before we got down to business, before we showed you what you're there to see, which is crazy cool stuff with sticky notes. Now, the big video, it, it did well. It got several million views, won some great industry awards. But it could have been a lot more. So what got in the way? Well, story got in the way. It turns out that unlike almost all other forms of film and video, viral video is not about story. We're you know, advertisers, filmmakers, we're used to thinking of everything as a story because stories are powerful tools for grabbing and holding attention. But surprisingly in viral video, story is just a waste of time. One of the most important things we realized is that viral video, actually it's, it's under the heading of the most important idea in this book, is viral video is the 21st century sideshow. And in the sideshow, if you have a sword swallower, show her swallowing swords. Don't tell us her life story. Look at, all, <clears throat> look at all the top videos on YouTube, all the viral videos. They're not telling stories. They're music videos. They're novelty songs. They're crazy dances. They're a kid biting his brother's finger. They're a panda sneezing. This is vaudeville. This is sideshow. So if you want to go viral, as tempting as it may be to make everything a story, don't do it. Just get down to business. And just like, just like a sideshow act, every viral video has a hook. It has something that provokes that reaction. I have never seen this before. And that brings us to rule number three, be unforgettable. The goal in viral video is to have something that would make for a great carnival barker's pitch so that you can imagine Step right up, step right up. <laughs> Sorry. Step right up, step right up. Watch a baby monkey riding backwards on a pig. And there's see, a hook. There's a hook. See what happens when you drop an iPhone into a blender. There's a hook. And watch, oh yes, watch a guy dance Gangnam style. There is something we have never seen before. And all these videos have great hooks. So how do you find a hook? Well, for us, we try to do something different and then take it further than anyone else has. For us, in our work, it means doing way more exploration than anyone would expect. You want to explore your corner of the world until you're the world's leading expert, until you own it. I would venture to guess that Fritz and I are the two world's leading experts on dropping candy into soda to make geysers. Candies, candy, soda, candy sodaology. Candy sodaology. There we go. And in the same way, we, we started out to be the world's leading experts. Our goal was to be the world's leading experts in sticking out waterfalls. You want to explore your idea like that until you own it. And that may get you to unforgettable. So looking back, you know, OK Go owned dancing in, on treadmills. And here it goes again. Uh, Cleary and Harding owned dancing with their hands in We Know Speak Americano. Each of these videos. Each of these videos was unlike anything anyone had seen before. And as a result, got millions of people telling their friends, oh my god, you've got to see this. So when we talk to, when we talk to people who want to make viral videos, we, we ask them, what odd thing are you passionate about? So I liked being a trial lawyer. I really enjoyed it. But except when I was actually in the middle of a trial or in those few crazy weeks leading up to one, when I went home at night, my cases weren't what I thought about. What I found myself thinking about were things like, <clears throat> I wonder if I can play Stars and Stripes Forever on glasses of water, <laughs> which it turns out I can. And, and I grew up as the son of two math professors. And I went off to study math at Yale. And then I quit school to become a juggler. And my parents were thrilled. <laughs> but 
what, what I found, I, I love math and I love juggling, but what I discovered was that when I got up in the morning, what I wanted to do, what I, what I was just itching to do was juggle and climb through coat hangers. Hmm. And that's what can lead to your viral video. That passion, that exploring, whatever it is you're excited about, can be what tips you into viral territory. So our question is, what do you find yourself thinking about when your time is your own? Explore that weird little corner of the world that you're curious about, like we did with Coke and Mentos, with sticky notes and so on, until you take it all the way to unforgettable. Now, people often come up to us and ask us if we can guess what their favorite part of our videos is. So is it that 12, 15 geysers going off all at once in synchrony? Is it 40,000 sticky notes falling from the ceiling all at once? Is it Fritz shooting down the road on a Coke and Mentos powered rocket car? Turns out it's none of those things. Almost everybody's favorite moment is at the end when we do this. <laughs> Now, all that other stuff is important. Those are our hooks. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to do this unless we'd done the other stuff. But the favorite moment is that one moment of humanity when we throw our arms up. And that brings us to our fourth rule. To make a connection, ultimately, it's all about humanity. When we throw our arms up in the air in that moment of triumph, the audience gets to celebrate. Our viewers get to celebrate with us in that absurd accomplishment. You actually feel a little bit of what we feel. Neuroscientists have discovered that emotion itself is contagious. So when you see us in that actual moment of we're really feeling that crazy moment of, of joy for a moment there, you actually feel a little bit of what we feel. Just neurologically, that kicks in. So if you're looking to go viral, if you're looking to create content that goes viral, show us your moment of triumph. Show us real human emotion. Give us some real moment of human reaction to connect to. The most compelling online videos from JK Wedding Entrance Dance to Susan Boyle to uh, David After Dentist, <laughs> Charlie Bit My Finger, and one of our, actually one of our all-time favorites, Where the Hell is Matt? These videos show us <laughs> moments of real, He's okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> moments of real humanity and real emotion. They show us the raw humanity that creates that strong, positive emotion. And that strong, positive emotion is something that we want to share. We want to share that experience with our friends. So finally, we'd like to take a look at one of the hot videos of the month uh, the, um, and, and see how it stacks up on the four rules from the Viral Video Manifesto. This is the uh, drive through invisible driver prank from Rahat Hussein. And I'll give you some sound. And uh, what I'm going to do, this costume is, I'm going to put it on and I'm going to go through a drive through Oh my God. <laughs> So that's just a little, a little bit of that video. So let's, let's take a look at how it does on the four rules. So first, rule one, be true. Great. It starts out, it's just him in a parking lot explaining what he's going to do. There's no set. There's no studio. I think it's just on the hood of his car. And that tells us immediately we're seeing something real. And then he begins to explain what he's going to do. And he explains the prank. Now, pranking someone's not true. You're being dishonest for a moment. But with us, <clears throat> we're totally in on it. He's completely authentic. <clears throat> and it's clear to us also what he's gonna, that he's, he's being straight with us. So high marks there as well. And then there's the seat. He shows us exactly how it's made. It's just cardboard covered with fabric. And it's not very good. It looks like cardboard covered with fabric. But it's good enough. And he knows that. And he knows that in the lighting and the, set that he's, the, the setting that he's going to be doing it, it will work. But for us to see that lousy cardboard and duct tape back is great. It's, it helps us, that, that lack of polish helps all the audience realize this is for real. This is really happening. 
the shinier it is and the more polished it is, you begin to get into areas where people may not trust you. So showing us that mediocre car seat costume really helped with the truth of it all. And then for the rest of the video, he shows us what Alan Funt, who was the creator of Candid Camera, who invented this kind of entertainment back in the 40s with radio, called people in the act of being themselves. So it's just real reaction after real reaction after real reaction. And it's there that he really hits it out of the park. So very true, very high marks on rule number one. And rule number two, don't waste my time. Uh, again, he does very, very well. The, it's basically just set up punchline, 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 punchline. It's very, very simple. The, the structure of Sideshow is set up and payoff. You need just enough setup so that you understand what you're about to see. If you don't understand that the sword is real, then it doesn't make the sword swallowing as real. So what he does here is just say, I'm going to a drive through here's my costume, here we go. And then it's punchline, punchline, punchline. Really, really good. A word about the, the edits, about the cuts. So he goes from one reaction clip to another. And with rule number one, be true, your goal ideally is one uninterrupted shot so that you maximize the feeling that you're just there. And every cut pulls us away from that feeling ever so slightly. But here, the cuts are to save us time. We don't want to see him driving, and we don't need to watch him driving from one restaurant to the other. You want to give us nothing but the money shot. So that's where rule number one, be true, actually competes with don't waste my time. And he uses edits like we sometimes do in our videos just to keep moving from one money shot to the next. So that's what he does, and he does it very well. Rule three, be unforgettable. This is usually the toughest one and the most important. And here it's really interesting because We've all seen a magician be invisible before. That's not new. And in fact, the idea even of an invisible driver isn't new. There was a photo that went viral a couple of years ago with this. If you can see the hands at the bottom. So even that wasn't new. But what Rahat does that is really unforgettable is he gives us those human reactions. Those people are actually experiencing something unforgettable. None of those people we saw in the video are ever going to forget the time they went to hand the brownie to the person mm -hmm. in the car and there was nobody there. And we get to see that. So he shows us moment after moment after moment of people having an unforgettable experience and, and experiencing that surreal reality that he puts in front of them. What's that one woman say? Am I tripping, son? <laughs> it's like, that's the world we get to see and we get to be part of that. So an unforgettable, even though he takes something we've all seen before, a magician being invisible, he really hits that out of the park by showing us the reactions of people to what he's got. And that is a direct line into, ultimately, it's all about humanity. This video just shows us the fun reactions, the funny reactions, the, just that awesome humanity that we get to relate to on screen that's so incredibly powerful. So this video does really well on all four rules. It's no surprise it's gotten 30 million views in the last couple of weeks. It's doing very well. So with viral video, the bottom line is this. It's about connecting with people. And that's what the viral video manifesto is really all about, connecting with people. And the ways to connect with people haven't changed for thousands of years. Be yourself. Don't waste my time. Show us something we've never seen before and be authentic. Everyone has the tools in front of them now. You know, anyone can go out and capture those moments of simple, unforgettable humanity. All you need today is a cell phone and a YouTube account. So thank you guys very much. And I think we have, I think we have some we time have some questions. for questions. Yeah. So I was wondering if there's anything you could, so, so you, there's all these positive things you can do to yeah. make a viral video. Are there also like opposite things or additional things you can, that you can do to make sure that your video would never go viral, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like the 
mistakes that you could make, right? That even if you did these four things, that would prevent your video from being successful. I think so. I, I think there's sort of the flip side of a lot of stuff we've talked about. So add a lot of story. Story doesn't go viral. Um, story is what's, what makes every other kind of film and video work, but it doesn't get people leaning forward and telling their friends. Uh, a lot of edits and a lot of cuts remove people from the feeling that they're really there in that moment, which is why the, the goal, the golden chalice is that one uninterrupted shot, like OK Go does that a lot, and the, the wedding videos do it, all the Charlie Bit My Finger videos are all uninterrupted. So the more you want to chop it up and edit it and change perspective, the more people are going to withdraw from that. But well, I think what we've, what we've found is that the videos that stay closest to these four rules quite consistently do, do go viral. The, the, there are videos like, uh, like Little Darth Vader, for instance, that, um, that isn't true. It's all staged. It's all acted. Um, but it's so unforgettable. I mean, it's staggering to see this little kid trying to use the force is, is something you've never, ever seen before. But then imagine if, by some miracle, it, well, it could actually even be done as, you know, as a, a little prank. Imagine a dad actually, right. actually pranking his son. If all that little Darth Vader was actually shot on a cell phone camera by some dad who did it. Who goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the car right when he goes like that. <laughs> and it's set up like, like Invisible Driver. That video would be even more powerful because it would have that truth. The other thing, if you want to kill your video, if you're hoping it'll go viral, product shots. <laughs> yeah. Death. Instant death. I mean, we work with a lot of brands, and we're fight, constantly fighting internal battles about that we need to get their brand in there where, where they can, it can be seen. But man, if you have one whiff of this is a commercial, it's really hard. Yeah, we, we actually way back in 2006, 2007, um, there was a, there was a, uh, I was literally watching this video going, oh, this is great. I got to tell Steven about this. Oh, this is awesome. This is going to be so cool. And right in, and, and it's, I mean, it's all this crazy weird stuff. And then right in the middle of it, it's like, ding. <laughs> and I was like, oh, screw it. Next. <laughs> it was this instant. So then instant he sent it to me out. just as a bad example. It's like, yeah. look what the hell they ruined this. Yeah. And, it, and yeah. it's actually, that's stuck in our memory because it was go, such a puncturing of the, of all the expectations. Well, you go from that active positive emotion, you go from that like, oh, I got to tell somebody about this. I got to, this is so, oh, that was right. stupid. I mean, you need to be, that's all, it's all be true. And it's like, if you can, on the other hand, um, speaking of be true and putting product shots in, the Will It Blend guy, there's no question of what he's doing. He's got his blender there and his brands in the background. And what, if he's got a blender that powerful, after a while, I kind of want to know what the brand is. But he doesn't go, and now another commercial from Will it, Will from it, Blendtec. Blendtec. Yeah. He, he just does it, and it's integrated really nicely. But if you have product shots, yeah. if, if you had to give me one, one secret <laughs> weapon to kill a video, yeah. that's what I would product use. Shots. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Good question. Thank you for mentioning the whole product shots thing. There was a, there was a viral video last year of, um, of Beckham King of kicking a soccer ball in trash oh, yeah. cans. Yeah. And Although it wasn't like, he never held up the Pepsi can. He is clearly holding a Pepsi can yeah. the whole thing. And just seeing that was enough to know that this whole thing was, was, was staged. Yeah. That. Um, actually, what I want to ask about was, um, you know, um, on YouTube now, like we're, our major focus now is on trying to get people to come here every day yeah. to like watch yeah. their favorite channels. Yeah. And obviously, building a sustained audience is very different from having one thing that goes viral you know, and a lot of what we a lot of what we've seen here are by creators who maybe created one thing one and got huge, and then like no one ever saw them again. Never even thought to go back and like learn more about this creator. So how does how does this fit with the uh, with the, the a, a programming strategy that somebody who wants to have um, a sustained audience coming back and watching them every week? Right. Right. So when when you when you want a sustained audience, you you've got to produce you know you've got to produce regular content. You just you just got to keep cranking stuff out. And that makes it really difficult to be unforgettable, in particular, because you know, the pressure is on you to be unforgettable. What, every day, every week? It's like, no. You, but you can be fun. You can be good. You can be solid every day or every week. Um, but if you can, if you can s stick to these principles and instill that active, positive emotion, then you'll you know, as you produce your regular content and build your following, then you can see spikes. The thing that takes time, the thing that takes budget, it, 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 just because it takes time, is the unforgettable piece of it. 
But all the rest of the stuff is also important and powerful. And it, 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 the question is actually something we're struggling with now because we've been we've had a career so far of, of the last six and a half years of, of these big spikes, and then we disappear and write books and do other things and we do have another spike. And we're beginning to think about what well, we need to build our YouTube channel actually and pe get people coming back. And so we're looking to do interesting, cool stuff that's not oh my god unforgettable in between what are going to be like we hope the tent poles and then and sort of build an audience and ideally. We'll go along so we have a spike and people, some people will stay and see our regular stuff and then we'll get another spike and maybe we'll get more people to stay and we'll get another spike with another uh, spectacular, we call them, and build it that way. But I, I think integrating them so that you can, you need the time to, to get that unforgettable stuff or you need to be really lucky. Yeah. And, but in between that, there's a lot of stuff that you guys probably understand better than we do about just and, building regular audience. And I, I find with, with some of my favorite sort of recurring creators, people I go back to a lot, um, like, uh, I really like My Drunk Kitchen. I think she's <laughs> awesome. And, uh, and so she's really true. Like, she, she just has this, this way. There's, there's, no, there's no pretense. You know, this is, it's, not, it's not all glitz and glamour, and it's not perfect. It's her. You get to see who she really is. It has, it's true. It has that, that humanity. Um, and, again, it keeps it efficient. It, the, the way that the, the, it is edited to give you the punchlines, to give you minimal setup punchline, setup punchline. Um, so that while those edits do pull us away a little bit, they also keep from wasting our time. So then every once in a while, an episode of something like My Drunk Kitchen comes along that I'm like, oh my god, that was so good. I got to share that with my friends. And then I'll come back to watching it and watching it, and then go, oh my god, I got to tell people about this one. The last thing I tag that with is is some of the people who've been the biggest successes in TV um, <clears throat> have followed a lot of these rules. So, and because they're themselves. So Johnny Carson and Ellen is really great. She's Ellen. Every you turn around, it's like that's who you get all the time. It's really she really is who she. she you, what you see is who she is. We actually do, did the show, and she's she's like that. She's super yeah. nice. Um, and, and letting that come through, Tom Bergeron is another example. He's just yeah, a really one of the, good host because he just is under control and he has a good time. And one of the one of the fun things uh, about Tom Bergeron is that he came from the same performing arts school yeah. in Maine that we went to, uh, and that that has encouraged this kind of be true, you know, cut through all of the tricks in the flash and just be yourself. So and subtract really out the powerful. unforgettable, and you still have the, those personalities are, are in large part really powerful, I think, because they let themselves be who they are. And that's... I think, I think that's, a, that's a great question. I think Stephen Colbert is saying, let's play this game. I'm Stephen Colbert, and now I'm going to pretend to be this guy over here. And what would he say? It's like a party game. Um, but I, I think we know who he is. At, at least we, we know the game he's playing. We know that he's playing a game. If, if he was, I'm going to try and do this completely straight, it would be weird. I don't know if that would catch. One is if you had to do a viral video with everyone in this room and at this venue, what would you come up with? And uh, the second question is, um, do you ever get viral video block, you know, similar to writer's block? Do you ever <laughs> not? You know, are you ever stuck and can't come up with an idea and you ever doubt yourself? Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely yes. Um, to 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 bite off the the second question first. Um, so we, uh, when, when we set out to make our, our second video, which is a sequel to the Extreme Coke and Mentos experiments, um, it was called The Domino Effect. And the idea was it was 250 geysers spread out over an, a huge field in Maine. And we pulled a pin that set off the first Coke and Mentos geyser that then triggered the next geyser that then triggered the next in this giant chain right. reaction. That was our second novel, and it had all of the second novel <laughs> agony. Um, it, it, was, um, it was so incredibly difficult to go, all right, we're going to try to do this again. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's always daunting. It's always, it's, it was the single most in particular, that the day of shooting it was the single most difficult day in our history, because um, literally, it, I mean, it took it took I eight hours right. to set everything up, and um, and we had and and so literally, we're 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 checking 
everything, I'm walking along, double checking everything, because if this works, it works. If it doesn't work, oh man. There was no other time. Like we had everyone had come to help us set up and then the weather was getting cold and okay, we didn't shoot it then. This was our chance it to get it. It was gonna be like this spring or something. So. And, um, and it was a hot day. Right. So all the soda has been sitting out for eight hours with, with little, little coconut mentos nozzles on top of it. The soda has so been- So we, we had a little tube on top that had the mentos inside. So they're sitting up there and you pull a pin and then they'll drop in and that'll cause a reaction. So the soda has been ev evaporating up- Little and, bits of it. And condensing All onto afternoon. the mentos right. inside the tubes. So I had to fix, at the very last minute, I had to fix one nozzle. And I, and I look and the mentos are sticky. Which means they may be stuck together, which means they may not drop. So the entire setup may be just stuck together. So I, I walk over to Steven as we're, <laughs> we're, as we're, like, as we're getting We're ready to roll. It's like ready it's for like the... All the cameras are ready. And I go, just so you know, this may not work. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> Actually, if you look carefully at that video, you can see that conversation yeah, going. Like, oh, boy. <laughs> but um, particularly where the, you know, the objective is this mm -hmm. unforgettable, which can feel so daunting. Um, really what we do is just go, all right, what are we interested in? Um, right now we're playing with, with, can I say? Oh yeah. Right yeah. now we're hanging upside down. Uh, um, we're, and it's just about, let, let's explore it. Let's see, what, let's see what we find. And then at a certain point we go, yeah, I think we found something. Let's film it and see what happens. I think the issue for us now is more, and this actually goes to the question, what would, what would we do with the people in this room to make something viral? is time. To get to that unforgettable stuff, you have to explore sticky notes or coca mentos geysers or paper clips or paper airplanes or whatever it is that you're interested in really thoroughly and go past where anyone else has gone before. And if you're doing sticky notes, that's easy. No one's ever done that before. So in a couple of weekends, we were ahead of the whole world on sticky note waterfalls. And then we just needed to explore it enough so we felt like we had sort of a critical point of, of enough content. Um, and when we're working with sponsors in particular, they're often time crunch. They want something by March 2nd. And that's the difficult part. But I think if we have time, I, don't th I think we've sort of figured out our process enough yeah. now to feel like if we have the time, we can do it, which is partly why I don't think we could do a viral video right now with the people in this room. But if you guys want to come back every afternoon for six weeks, yeah. we'll have something. We can do it. I don't know what it will be, but we, we would totally have it. We're, we're, we live way out in the woods of Maine in a town of about 1,500 people. Um, and it's really, really helpful that there's not a whole lot to do. <laughs> There's <laughs> drinking, which is, <laughs> yep. which is what a lot of the other residents. It really lends. Anyway. It really lends itself. You know, where we live really lends yeah. itself to that. Like, all right, let's spend the next six months exploring how to. I mean, building the Coca Mentos rocket car. Yeah. You know, took it took years. Uh, you know, in between not, everything not solid, else, but, yeah. but it took forever. From the idea to when we actually did yeah. it, it took. From the very first, like sitting on a skateboard <laughs> with four with four. Four guys. Are about this far. Yeah, it was literally like. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> it's all about those little victories. Yeah. So, yeah. We we actually uh, it, well if you if you look online there is the Coke and Mentos rocket car early experiments. Which is actually better in some ways than and the actual. Yeah, Coke you and will Mentos see car. you will see just how pathetic it was. <laughs> this assumes that. The video speaks for itself, and all these four components are within the video. Yeah. But for a channel that's just starting out, how would you, um, in this world of curated content, where would you share your video? What sorts of sites would you post on? Do you share on other sites? Is there a certain um, outside of the video virality um, I guess, rule book? Yeah. I think the answer is there absolutely is, and we ask other people to help us there. Yeah, I mean, what our focus has been on is, is this element of style. You know, is right. what, you know, there's, there's all of this knowledge that's been gathered for decades about how to make a TV show. But how do you, you know, what is the content? How do you make a video to go viral? But, but you're right, when, when we started, when we, when we put uh, what we call Experiment 137, our first Coke and Mentos video online in June of 2006, Content by itself could rise to the top. Yeah. We really, we told one person that it was on fire. And but now was, there's so much noise out there. Yeah. Um, you need to figure out some strategies to be, to just rise, rise above the noise and then 
travel on your merits across the internet. But, one but the, rising above the noise is a project. One of the curious things, so we can, we can tell you a little bit about the, the, the Coke and Mentos rocket car, um, where we, um, what we found was that it caught on amongst car fanatics. Um, right. And that in particular, when we released a second video of the Coke and Mentos rocket car Mark II, uh, we were able to go, it's a new world record. Ah, uh, that was a great, a great hook, if you can now, get a new world record. We're the only competition. <laughs> <That's> so uh, <laughs> it wasn't like, oh, we beat, the, you know, we beat the German engineering on this. It was simply, we built one that went further than the last one we built. Um, but that hook yeah. got it into all kinds of car and driver type, right. type blogs and magazines and things. Um, so we, we were, along the way, looking for the places where, you know, is this going to appeal to you know, art people with, with sticky notes? Is this going to appeal to engineers? Like, uh, the Coke and Mentos rocket car ended up taking hold on some green websites. Right. Um, now... It goes about one foot per liter of fuel, <laughs> so it's not exactly a fuel-efficient vehicle. But um, but they they but they got a kick out of it. Sort of an alternative energy hook to it. That as, as a funny way to talk about, hey, let's let's think in new ways about fuel efficiency. As 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 ways to, that you guys can take away if you're trying to work on a project. Um, world records is a really good hook that that often gets a, news headlines and attention that can bring you more views. And if you're doing something like sticky notes or, or, or paper airplanes or whatever your thing is, you can set your own world record and then you can break it. So it's, 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 a, it's a plan you can have going forward. If once you become the owner of that little space, you can then start using hooks like world records to get attention and get your video above the noise. So thank you guys so much. Yeah. I hope you'll visit our website and send us emails and put stuff like that. We'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Thanks.